Minister of Justice Ronald Lamola, Lamola is uh, um, going to be addressing the media following uh, the conclusion of those court proceedings. He is outside The Hague. There, You see him there. And uh, we will be going to him as, as soon as he begins uh, his proceedings. Of course, uh, South Africa having concluded its presentation before the International Court of Justice. Let's listen in. Department of International Relations. And behind him is the Director General for the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development. And to my right is our ambassador, um, our ambassador to the Netherlands. And we're also joined by our Palestinian friends. Over to you, Minister Lamola. Thank you very much. The government of the Republic of South Africa, led by His Excellency President Matamela Sir Ramaphosa, entrusted me with representing its commitment to the rule of a just law and to confirm and assert a universally rule-based society and the respect for human rights and specifically the rights of the Palestinian people to sovereignty, to peace and to life. We want firstly to thank our excellent legal team for an able presentation at the court. We also want to thank the court for granting the government of the Republic of South Africa an opportunity to present its case in real time. We hope that this decision will also be impactful to the people of Gaza and Palestine in general. Since the advent of our democracy in 1994, South Africa's foreign policy has been based on what our forebears inscribed in the Freedom Charter in 1955 when they declared that South Africa shall be a fully independent state with respect the rights and the sovereignty of all nations. South Africa shall strive to maintain world peace and the settlement of all international disputes by negotiations and not war. Close quote. South Africa has supported various resolutions of the United Nations and other international solutions to support a just and a lasting solution that will bring peace to the Palestinians and Israelis alike. Working together with the international community and in alignment with the relevant UN resolutions and international law, South Africa seeks to ensure a lasting and a durable peace that produces a viable, contiguous Palestinian state, coexisting side by side in peace with Israel, within the 1967 international recognized borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. Our president has called for a ceasefire and humanitarian interventions on numerous occasions. Our foreign policy is aimed at improving the well-being, safety and prosperity of all citizens and the achievements of a better Africa and the world. The key pillars of our foreign policy include the promotion of human rights, peace and stability, and the strengthening of trade and investment ties with other countries. The world has watched in horror as Palestinian men, women and children were slaughtered, blown up, buried alive under the rubble of their homes, left to die painful deaths in unresourced hospitals, resulting in over 23,000 deaths through destruction to homes, schools, hospitals, water, treatment plants and other public infrastructure that impairs the conditions of life and is calculated to bring about the destruction in whole or in part of the Palestinians living in Gaza. South Africa has unequivocally condemned the attack by Hamas on the 7th of October and it has also done so and is not verbal to the State of Israel conveying its condemnation of that action of, of Hamas on the 7th of October. And South Africa has reiterated here in court that, that those atrocities are no justification for any form of genocide. With the recent escalation of the aggression of Israel in Gaza, South Africa has supported a number of UN resolutions calling for immediate ceasefire and the provision of humanitarian aid to the people of Palestine. Sadly, the world has not succeeded in stopping the genocide that is currently unfolding in Gaza. The international community has largely remained passive in response to these atrocities. Women and children in areas such as refugee camps, schools and hospitals have been targeted, leading to a humanitarian crisis. We also unequivocally call the United Nations Secretary General invoked a rarely used article of the UN Charter, Article 99. The Secretary General Antonio Guterres on the 6th of December 2023 called on the Security Council to press to avert a humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza and unite in a call for a full humanitarian ceasefire between Israel and the Palestinian militants. This plea of Ubuntu 
a plea for humanity of the international community to pervade was simply ignored, Israel's institutional impunity was reinforced. In keeping with our obligation as a state party to the Genocide Convention, our government has approached the International Court of Justice to prevent the unfolding genocide in Gaza. We have also asked for provisional measures which include an immediate suspension of Israel's military operations in and against Gaza. The commitment to justice and bring an end to the humanitarian atrocities in Palestine resonate deeply with the collective consciousness of the global community. The scale of these actions is reminiscent of the Rwandan genocide 30 years ago. We are here on behalf of South Africa and the global community to seek justice for the victims, particularly children, women and the elderly. We believe that without the intervention of this court, of the international community, we will see the total destruction of the Palestinian people in Gaza. Remaining silence in the efficacy of this and in and of itself will be a gross violation of international law. As a state party to the Genocide Convention, we have a duty to prevent genocide. We are seeking the court to intervene and stop the ongoing massacre in Gaza. Today it is common cause that the Rwandan genocide could have been prevented. Former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan expressed this regret when he said, and I quote, the international community failed Rwanda, and that must leave us always with a sense of bitter regret and abiding sorrow. Close quote. Rwanda stands out as a stem and severe rebuke to all of us for having failed, to, to, for, for the international community having failed to prevent it from happening. Let us not have it live with the same regret when it comes to Palestine. This case presents the court with an opportunity to act in real time to prevent genocide from continuing in Gaza by issuing an urgent injunction. South Africa is multifaceted, multicultural, and a multiracial country that embraces the concept of Ubuntu as a way of defining who we are and how we relate to others. Ubuntu means I am because you are. I am becomes Hamza Abdullah is. You are because Duna Ab Mozen is. The philosophy of Ubuntu means humanity and is reflected in the idea that we affirm our humanity when we affirm the humanity of others. It has played a major role in the forging of South African national consciousness and in the process of its democratic transformation and nation building. Our history is one of repression and violence, human rights abuses, Apartheid is a crime against humanity, discrimination and distrust between people born on the same soil. This history enjoins us to stand in principle in solidarity with the people of Palestine, as of our founding father would have wanted us to do, Nelson Mandela. Because our history is one marked by crimes against humanity, the recent horrific scenes of the city of Gaza being transformed into mass burial ground, haunt of our minds. The alarming sight of jubilant armed forces rejoicing to the chance who are finishing off Gaza is an act among several others that warrant a thorough examination by this honorable court. The words of Israel ministries, Israel members of parliament, the generals of the army, speeches such as cooling people of Palestine, human animals, shows a clear statement of intent to wipe out the Palestinian people out of Gaza. The UN Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination stated that such language is an incitement to genocide and underscored the importance of preventing genocide by all state parties. As a signatory to the convention, we also have a duty to bring this matter to the court's attention and to stop genocide. The actions taken by Israel against Palestinians are considered by many state parties, including the state of Palestine itself, to be in breach of the convention. Palestine has expressed grave concerns over the international system's incapability to prevent acts of genocide against its people and has urgently called for an action to hold such acts. The uncompromising enforcement of the rule of law must be used to seize the ongoing atrocities in Gaza. This case also is about the assertion and the affirmation of the international rule of law and to end exceptionalism when it comes to the state of Israel. Our distinguished legal team has expanded on our case in the, honor of, in the court. We want to conclude with the words of Martin Luther King, when he said, and I quote, the arch of the moral of the universe is long, always bending 
towards justice. We believe justice will prevail in this court. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Can you tell us what difference you think this case will make on the ground in Gaza? Okay. It will make a huge difference the fact that the state of Israel is held to account by the international community. The soldiers, they know, the authorities in Israel, they know that if they continue, they may one day be called even before the ICC individually and be held accountable. So the message is clear, they must cease, they must desist from the acts of genocide. Mr. 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 How confident are you that the court will actually pronounce these uh, provisional measures against Israel? Obviously we cannot um, want to um, overtake the court's role and also second guess the court. We believe that we have, prevent, we have presented a compelling case, facts, and uh, the law, international law. There is clear jurisprudence with regards to the case and the facts that we have, prevented, we have presented. As you have heard, our lawyers have also quoted uh, extensively on international jurisprudence. That is, what, that, is where, that is where we stand on, and um, we will continue to allow the court to examine the facts, and come up with the verdict. It's not for us to pronounce on behalf of the court. Minister, when, when, when do you expect, minister said, when do you expect you are the, the legal decision? Minister, of Hamas. How okay. do you respond to that? Minister, there's often a statement made by many countries, particularly those who are sympathetic to Israel, uh, that uh, those Western powers who are sympathetic to Israel are likely going to punish South Africa. What is South Africa's position in relation to perhaps a fallout that is likely going to ensue? Thank you, Sophie. I will take that question. Um, we have engaged with many of the countries that you've mentioned. Many of them understand that we take diametrically different positions to them. Our position is on, on Palestine, as the ministers pointed out, and as our legal team has pointed out, is based on principle. So we can defend our position with all of them. And in fact, we're doing this in, in the interest of securing justice for Palestinians, but it's also to ensure that international law, as you pointed out, is implemented fairly and also evenly. And that is in the interest of preserving international law for all. Minister. Minister. Zane Dango, Director, of, Director General of International Cooperation. Minister, Minister, Minister do you, do you recognize any responsibility by Hamas to the situation happening now in Gaza? <coughs> As um, we have said in court, we have condemned the action of Hamas on the 7th of October, and um, we have done so also through a not verbal to the State of Israel. Minister, Minister how, how do you comment on the of the court? Is it a matter of days or a few weeks? How when do you expect that? Yeah, obviously we, 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 we want to not to, to preempt the court, not to put unnecessary pressure on the court, but we believe the court has heard our side, they understand the agency, and they will deliver the, the verdict within reasonable time. Minister, you expect other ties with the Ministry of Israel and just commented that you, at South Africa is the legal arm of Hamas. How do you respond to that? Yeah, we, we have presented a case here um, uh, on behalf um, of the government of the Republic of South Africa and we are doing so on behalf of a number of Palestinians, young kids, women and the elderly that are being um, uh, killed in, um, in, um, in, in Gaza. It is n it, we are not presenting any case on behalf of Hamas. So that statement is baseless, that statement has got no merit. We, we do not have any mandate from, from Hamas. Our mandate is from the South African government, and um, our case also is not against the Jews as a people. Our case is against the actions of the state of Israel, the actions of genocide that are committed in Gaza. In South Africa, we have got a number of Jewish people doing business, living with us, and uh, they also attend their churches in peace. So the case is about the state of Israel, it's not about the Jewish people as a community. You have is no South contact Africa with Hamas people other at countries all? in African Union or in Asian countries? Or Latin yeah, American you have already countries? asked the Minister, question. Ask, Israel says you're playing politics with this and it has a right to self-defense. What's your response? This is, a, is the highest organ of the UN. I think it will be an insult to the court uh, to say that the court granting us an opportunity to present our compelling case that all of you have seen 
citing international law, providing facts, and citing the in relevant articles of the convention, Article 1 of the convention, and a number of um, UN conventions that the court um, has been presented with. So we have presented a compelling legal argument. This is not politics. We are expecting the court to pronounce on the facts and on the law. And what should happen to Israel if it ignores the outcome? Uh, did you? Sorry, what was the question? Can you the diplomatic relations with Israel, will you maintain them? So, as, as, uh, obviously, currently our diplomatic relations is not normal. You've seen that we have recalled our ambassadors from, 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 from Israel, and Israel has also recalled the ambassador from Your South Africa. Left many years ago already. Yes, and we've also recalled our entire team. Um, in, in, in essence, what we are saying is that on the, we will wait for the outcome of this court case, but also for the for, for justice to be found within Palestine, and we hope that after that we can engage with, with Israel as with other stakeholders towards a just and lasting peace for both Palestinians and Israelis. So you will decide on the fate of the relations after the court uh, issues? I think we'll be able to engage with our relations a lot more openly after the court case has been concluded. And Minister, what if the court doesn't agree with you? Would that lead to South Africa questioning this system itself? Yeah, we, we are here to assert the international rule of law. This is the highest organ of the, of the UN. We, want, we believe that the judges are professionals. We are cognizant of the reality of, a, of an international court in this jurisdiction and how it's function. But they have taken an oath and we want to give them the, 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 the benefit of a doubt that they will be able to exercise professionally. Um, and that's why we presented the case, uh, citing facts, citing jurisprudence, citing the necessary conventions of the UN. But Minister, do you honestly believe that the Israelis want to wipe out the Palestinians of Gaza? Do you personally believe that? Yes, we do. Do you have any contact with the Palestinians? Do you have any contact with Hamas people at any point? I want to say so, a statement. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, well, uh, you want to go ahead, Excellency? Yes, uh, well, first of all, I think the facts uh, speak for themselves. What Israel is doing in, in Gaza Strip is obvious based on fact and law that they are wiping the people of Gaza and forcibly and putting the population there in conditions that will lead to their demise. Allow me to say a few words in Arabic uh, on behalf of the state of Palestine and then uh, to, to make a short statement also in English. Uh, دولة فلسطين تثمن عاليا وتقدر وتدعم بلا تحفظ الخطوة التاريخية التي أقدمت عليها جنوب أفريقيا تنفيذا لالتزاماتها بموجب اتفاقية منع الإبادة الجماعية والمعاقبة عليها وتحريكها لدعوة ضد إسرائيل السلطة القائمة بالاحتلال نتيجة حرب الإبادة الجماعية التي ترتكبها ضد الشعب الفلسطيني في غزة لقد وضعت النقاشات اليوم المحكمة والتي تقدمت بها جنوب أفريقيا المحكمة والعالم بصورة الجرائم التي ترتكب بحق الشعب الفلسطيني والتي تفضي إلى ارتكاب جريمة الإبادة الجماعية ولكن أيضا في السياق التاريخي الأشمل للقضية الفلسطينية والجرائم التي ترتكب بحق الشعب الفلسطيني بدءا من النكبة والاستعمار ونهب أرضه والتمييز العنصري وكل ما إلى ذلك من انتهاكات كانت ترتكبها إسرائيل على مدار 75 عام هذه لحظة تاريخية للشعب الفلسطيني وللإنسانية وكذلك للنظام الدولي المبني على والقائم على القانون نتقدم بالشكر لكل الدول التي ساندت هذا الطلب وندعوها أيضا هذه الخط... ندعوها للقيام واتباع الخطوة الشجاعة التي قامت بها جنوب أفريقيا ودعمها من خلال الدخول في مرحلة النقاشات الـ 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 التي تناقش تفاصيل القضية لاحقا أخيرا نؤكد أن لا أحد لا أحد يمكن له الادعاء بعدم معرفة والجهل بالجرائم التي ترتكبها إسرائيل بحق الشعب الفلسطيني وستواصل القيادة الفلسطينية ودولة فلسطين سعيها لإحقاق الحق الفلسطيني وتنفيذا لكل الحقوق الفلسطينية ومساءلة كل الجرائم التي ارتكبت بحق الشعب الفلسطيني Allow me to say a few words in English and I'll try to make it short I know you've been waiting for long sorry to make you wait for that long but we thank you for being here with us in this historic 
day not only for Palestine, but for humanity and for the whole international rules-based system. The state of Palestine values and appreciates wholeheartedly the historic action taken by South Africa today at the highest international court. As a party to the Genocide Convention, South Africa has acted in pursuance of its obligations and duty to prevent and punish the crime of genocide by requesting the ICJ to intervene to, to suspend the genocidal war launched by Israel against the Palestinian people in Gaza. Very importantly, the South African oral argument also presented the context in which this genocide is happening, a continuum of Nakba, of colonization, of dispossession, oppression and apartheid that the Palestinian people have been suffering from for the past 75 years. South Africa presents a damning evidence confirming that Palestinian people have suffered and are suffering irreparable harm from Israel's violation of the Genocide Convention. This is a pivotal moment for the international system. South Africa took a bold and proactive step on behalf of humanity to protect the Palestinian people and ensure that the Genocide Convention and international law do not com become completely irrelevant, which is a prospect that must terrify all of us. Nearly 100,000 Palestinians have been killed, disappeared under the rubble and injured by Israel's over the past three months. Israel caused systematic, extensive and deliberate destruction of the foundations of life in Gaza, including homes, infrastructure, hospitals, churches, mosques. Israel displaced nearly the entire population and is deliberately starving the population. Israel is destroying the foundations of life in Gaza. We thank all states and intergovernmental organizations who supported this important and historic step by South Africa. We also urgently call on all states to take steps to support South Africa's application. And let me be clear, no one and no one can claim plausible deniability that thanks to at least the 115 colleagues of yours that have been killed by Israel in the course of the three months that passed. The Palestinian leadership will not relent until our rights of return, freedom and independence are achieved. Humanity is at crossroads. The case before the ICJ is a test to the international system. It is a moment of naked truth and an opportunity to provide hope to humanity at a time when it's sorely needed. Leaders have a historic responsibility and their actions will be judged by history. Thank you.